You know, we love stories of innovation, and I think AI complicates that. James Dyson dropped a viral seven-minute video talking about the new vacuum cleaner that they've introduced, which I'm sure I'm going to butcher, but basically it's got um, an even narrower motor. It drives up to the walls. Uh, it has special lights to see dust. It doesn't get sort of hair trapped on it, etc. So he talked about it for seven minutes, like Steve Jobs introducing the iPhone. It racked up millions of views. And there's something that people are forgetting in all of that that complicates this story. As much as we want that story, one in two vacuum cleaners around the world now are AI. They're robot-driven vacuum cleaners. Because it turns out when given the choice, a lot of people don't want to vacuum at all. They want the robot to vacuum. And so no matter how well James and his team engineer that tool, if they cannot get a robot to do it, if a human has to drive the vacuum, it is possible they are barking up the wrong tree. And I want to just take a minute to sit with that fact because I actually think that video was fantastic. The innovation is amazing. The engineering is phenomenal. And I think it shows a lot of the ideation that can come from truly high-performing teams that ideate with humans. And I know we talk about AI a lot, but I think that there is a quality to human ideation that raids other things in order to come up with ideas. So the famous story of the invention of penicillin, right? You just leave it out on the windowsill and then you notice something happened and you decide to raid that idea and turn it into a drug. J.R.R. Tolkien wrote, in the hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. On the back of some exam papers, long before there was a book or he had any notion of a story. And from that fragment of like weird brain context, he created a whole world. Humans are really good at that kind of raid the context thinking, and AI is not particularly good at it. And so on the one hand, I think it's great to see continued examples of human engineering. We need more of them. And on the other hand, I think we need to bring that innovation to bear in places where it will actually be used and sold, etc. No matter how good that engineering is, I do not believe it will be enough to move people away from the core I don't want to vacuum need. I just don't think it will. And so the challenge, I think, is for humans to apply that creative left of center, wild, uh, we call it left field in English, where it's like way out in the back end of the baseball field, thinking to problems that have a high likelihood of being valuable and useful if they're solved. And yes, that includes AI problems. The obvious question is, why isn't James Dyson designing an AI robot vacuum cleaner? Maybe he is. Maybe he hasn't released it yet. Maybe it will be amazing. But it's not out yet, and the AI robot revolution is ticking along in the world of vacuum cleaners. So it's been a bit. Where are there problems that need that sustained human creative input? Are you prioritizing for them? And if you are, are they worth solving for? Are they in line with larger product needs? That is the question for product teams, for engineering teams, for founders. If you're building, that is what you have to wrestle with. Because if you pick the wrong problem space, if you pick the wrong problem, if you apply all your creativity in a way that isn't useful, you're going to be selling into a market that's shrinking, which is frankly where Dyson is. And it doesn't matter how good you are if you're selling into a shrinking market. And so my thinking, my challenge for you and for anyone else that you have in your life who is in the building and innovation space, don't give up on that. Don't think of that as something that only AI is going to be able to do going forward. I know about Alpha Evolve. We've talked about it on this channel. AI will be able to come up with new ideas. But the kinds of ideas that it's innovating are truly different. And we need to let them be different, let it be a parallel stream of innovation. And we need to value our own ways of innovating. And we need to apply them in problem spaces that matter. So that's my two cents. If you want to read more on sort of how I think about humans and innovation, I did a piece on, uh, on the Substack on that today. Cheers.